Have you ever felt like God is testing you? Like you're going through something and you just can't understand why in the world God would like be allowing it. Today's verse about not being afraid actually comes from this uh, neat moment, um, but, but potentially depending on how you read it, challenging moment uh, that comes right after the Ten Commandments are given to Israel, right? So in Exodus chapter 20, Moses has been on the mountain a couple of times, right? This has been a process. And in chapter 20, Moses comes down with the Ten Commandments for the first time this way that Israel and God can have a covenantal relationship with each other. These, these 10 things that are really important for keeping relationships healthy, right? Don't worship other people. Don't worship other gods, right? Uh, careful how you carry my name. Uh, take this time and let it be about us. Uh, you know, don't, don't, don't get all about stealing and, 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 and don't ruin your other relationships. I'm in all of these relationships, right? And so he goes through these, these 10 commandments, what we call the 10 commandments today. And at the end of it, it actually describes that there's like thunder and lightning and the ground is shaking and it says there's smoke and a trumpet sounding. Like imagine yourself there, right? Imagine you're there with Israel and everything seems like it's coming down on you. Like you're there beneath Mount Sinai and, and it is all going crazy. That must have been pretty terrifying. Like I, it's almost hard to wrap my head around what that could have been like. And so the people understandably, like they, they hung back, they, they kind of shrank back. They're like, oh, no, whoa, 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 whoa. Well, this is like what's going on, all this stuff. I'm not used to all this stuff. I'm going to shrink back. I, I, you know, I don't need smoke coming at me. I don't need a, a trumpet blaring. This thunder and lightning is terrifying. I'm unfamiliar. This is completely unfamiliar territory. And so they shrink back. They want to run. They need God to stop this incredible experience. God, please intervene. Knock it off. Whatever it is that you're doing in the world right here in front of us, I need you to stop it because it, it, I'm really uncomfortable with it. I'm, I'm, I'm very uncomfortable with how it is you're choosing to work right now. And, and so if you could just uh, let Moses talk to us instead, that would be great. Because what is familiar to us is most comfortable, isn't it? Like when it's Moses that's been talking to us, well, we're comfortable, like that could just last forever, couldn't it? And I think we're all kind of experiencing unfamiliar territory. We're in the midst of a pandemic. We might be asking some of the same kinds of questions. And while there might not be thunder and lightning and smoke, and well, there's plenty of smoke in California, and ground shaking, uh, there's in riots and politics and protests and, 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 and viruses and political unrest. There's a lot going on in the world. It just seems like, God, what are you doing? Where did you go? Did you disappear? What happened? Like, this is totally unfamiliar to me. I'm used to more of a calm, regular, everyday existence where I can go to a, a worship service and feel your presence there. What is going on? And Moses has these words about being afraid. In this moment where, where they're scared and they're angry and they, they wish their experience with God could just go back to the way it was, Moses says this in Exodus 20, verse 20. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. God has come to test you so that the fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning. That's interesting thing to say right there but the hebrew word for to test you is is the the word nasot nasot okay and nasot has the definitely has the meaning of of to test to test like man you're testing my patience right like you're seeing how far it's gonna go that kind of a connotation and it's also tied to the idea of experience like a test of experience it's it's really what is what Moses is saying here is God has come to test your experience of him 
so that the fear of God, your respect, your reverence of God, your experience of God's presence can be something your faith can get used to more regularly. Like what, if you want God among us, if you want God to be with us, if you want to, to, to have this relationship with God and you want this, this is part of the experience. It might seem different. It might seem scary, but God is showing his might. He's showing his power and he's saying, this is who I am and I love you. So yes, fear God. Let that keep you from sinning. Let that keep you from breaking these commandments, right? From breaking the relationship. Let that respect, may you know that you have nothing to fear because the God of all things is the only thing you should fear. And God has come that you might experience this presence and get used to it. Get used to it more regularly. That you might have this taste of the presence of God. What God like shows, sometimes it feels terrifying, it feels scary, it feels unfamiliar to us, but what it's intended is as a gift. A gift to help them adjust to his presence more regularly. A gift that says, hey, I know impulsively you want to run, but stick with me. I know it's scary, but hang in there. My presence is with you in a more powerful way, and you can be more aware of it than ever. So there are these moments that we're shaken out of our comfort zone, right? There are these moments where we come face to face and God has another step of faith, another level of trust that we can have in God. And, and it can be scary. It can be terrifying. And he's saying, I need you to, just to get used to my presence. Maybe not just in this space, but maybe in another kind of a space, maybe in another kind of a way. I want you, I want to expand your faith so that it's not just about what's familiar, but so that your faith is about what is unfamiliar as well. So that your faith can reach out and touch people regardless of the situation around you. So that your life can be, can, can be part of an extension of what it is that God is doing in the world. And so we have this opportunity. Today's opportunity in the midst in, of a pandemic when it seems that you know all the usual ways to connect with God seem to kind of be missing we have this opportunity to adjust our faith to a more consistent daily awareness of God, the mighty, the powerful God, to let that transform us so that others, as we're going through this different time and we're experiencing life differently, that others can see the faith in us individually, to see it personally, and they're impressed by it. They say, I wonder what? I wonder who that person's been hanging out with. I wonder if this God is real. To trust God through a time in our lives that we never thought we'd have to deal with. But God has come to give us the experience of his presence on a daily basis. So that we can come closer to being aware of him all the time. So I want you just to pray today with me. And I pray that you would experience God more regularly and more powerfully, no matter how scary that might be sometimes. Bow your heads with me. God, thank you that you offer us the gift of your presence. And God, that often calls us out of our comfort zones. It calls us uh, to the edges. It calls us to... to, to to reach out and figure out what you would do in various situations that we never thought we'd have to deal with. I just pray, God, for all of those who are tuned in right now and watching that, that today, that today might be a day where they are a little bit more aware of your presence with them, a little more regularly, a little more powerfully, a little more constantly. God, may we know that you're with us and may we see you work around us today. I pray this in your name. Amen. Mm -hmm.